Hi everyone, so today I want to show you how I made this card and I'm calling it a 5x7 multi-floating diamond card. I don't know if you remember the triple floating diamond card from a while ago. Um, I think it was, um, oh no, I'm going to get a name wrong. I'll put it up on the screen, the name of the lady who I saw do the triple floating diamond. I just thought let's do some multi-diamond. So this is the card. Um, you can either have it as I had it just then or you can open it up a little bit more and have it more like this Which is how the floating diamond was. Um, I quite like it like that. Actually, it's quite nice But it folds down nice and flat. I'm not these I've been literally just stuck these down But it folds down that goes over there like that and that goes over there like that and they fold down flat And it will fit in an envelope for a five by seven card Um, so yeah, so the papers I've used today are my new pack and it's called power is that how you spell i think that's how you pronounce it power power perfect and so i'm just going to quickly show you through some of the papers and um, you can go and find this on etsy i had a request for someone to do uh for, for me to make a, a paper pad based on this power shell from new zealand so that's what i've done so i've got some really nice kind of different papers some wood grain which is what i've used at the back panels on my card and then we've also got I decided to go a little bit beachy as well. So I've got a little bit of sand and some uh, sea as well. So obviously that's landscape. Um, and then we've got some more of the shell. I've actually got some of the shells and made it, sort of tiled it. So it's like an actual pattern paper. Um, this really beautiful, just a bit different. Um, and again, some of the lovely, beautiful colours, the iridescent colours you get on the shells. And quite a lot of that is, that's what I've done. Because they're all different kind of iridescent -y type things. So... Um, they're quite nice to go well together is the blue then i've done this one which is kind of like a little pile of them all like different piles of them all together tiled again and then we've also got that one to finish off okay so if you check go over to my etsy store the link will be on the screen you can go and find that in there digital paper pack and you can print off whatever you want but i do quite like this a lot actually and it's turned out a lot better than i thought it was going to so yeah so that's what i've used for this then also the matte card here is a sparkle print card from paper mill direct um I, it wasn't periwinkle it was something else i can't remember it's called powder powder purple i think it was but i'll put a link up on um in the description below these gems were from lucy's shop um i can't remember i got the die from i'll try and link it if i know and the navy card uh just some i had in my stash so yeah so that's the card for today so let's get into it Okay, so for this card, you're going to need um, a few bits and bobs, not too much, but you will need a few bits because you've got quite a few squares there. So to start with, you're going to need a base piece that is 7 inches by 11 inches. And along the 11 inch edge, you're going to score at half an inch, at 3 inches, at 5 and a half, at 8, and at 10 and a half. Then you also need two base pieces that are approximately one inch by seven inches. I've used my offcuts, so mine are like one and a quarter. So you want to score basically halfway, roughly halfway along, you know, from top to bottom on both of those. So I'm just kind of eyeing this. But obviously, if you're using a one by seven, you're going to score halfway at half an inch. So mine's just over. I think mine's at five eighths, okay? Um, and also because I didn't have seven inches, I've got just under six, which is fine. So just see what you know what you've got left over. Don't don't stress too much if you haven't got one inch by seven. And then what you want to do is we're going to score. We're not going to score. We're going to fold and burnish. So on our original one, this is going to be a, a mountain. Then we're going to have a valley, a mountain, a valley, and a mountain all the way along. You should end up with that hopefully so then if you bring in your two pieces that you also just folded these just need to be folded and um, you can make them as mountains or valleys whatever you want doesn't matter um, you'll need them just to be folded in half basically and what we're going to do is we need to stick these down first before we start decorating everything so these are basically going to be like a little hinges, like a little tabs. And if you wanted to, you can do separate tabs, but I just found it easy to do one big tab. So I'm going to put red tape down the side here and also there. And then that's going to go on there like that. So that the folded edge lines up with the center score line. This one's going to do the same again. So we're going to put that on like that. So I'm going to go ahead, add some uh, red tape onto both, both sides, and then I'm going to stick that down. Okay. 
Okay, so I've put the tape on both sides of like the mountain, and then we're just going to peel off the backing on one side. If you want to use wet glue, you can. It does make it a little bit easier for sticking it down. And then this is going to go, as I said, with the folded edge um, needs to be lined up with this centre edge here. So you should end up with that. So I'm hoping you can see on that. So that's where you can see. You can see how it just sort of stands out. So that's the first little tab, little ledge. And this is the second one. Okay, so that's what you want. So now we can go ahead and decorate these four panels here and also the two on the back. So for that, you're going to need um, six pieces of mat that are two and a quarter by six and three quarters. And on top of that, you're going to need four pieces of pattern that are two by six and a half and two pieces of white that are two by six and a half. So I'm going to go ahead, stick all my pattern on the front and then I shall stick my mat on the back um, and I just need to get some white pieces for that. So you should end up with that as your front. And then if you turn over, you've obviously got your bits of white on mat at the back. So going back to the front again, we now need to add on some red tape onto these two tabs here. And then you're going to need eight pieces of base card that are two and a half by two and a half eight pieces of mat that are two and a quarter by two and a quarter and eight pattern pieces that are two by two. Okay, so I'm using my new papers on these. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna stick down. To start with, we're gonna put them one at the top like that at a diamond and one at the bottom. And on this middle section, we're not going to put one on the middle because we're going to put a slightly bigger one on the middle. If you want to use uh, the same size again, you can. You can do that. But I was going to go ahead and put a slightly bigger one in the middle just because it is the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick these two down. So you'll end up with a little bit of sticky left in the middle there. You will need that, but you'd also need to add a bit more on. This is what I was saying. If you want to do separate tabs, you can. So you've got one behind here, one behind here, and then one behind your big middle piece. I just find it easy just to do one big one. Um, right, so then the big one in the middle, you need a piece of mat, sorry, base card that is three by three. And then your mat piece is two and three quarter by two and three quarter. And then either your pattern or your topper or your greeting or whatever you're having in the middle needs to be two and a half by two and a half. I'm going to I've just done my mat and my base. And what I'm going to do is I'm then also going to find a greeting that I can put on on there in the middle. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick this down. So just make sure that it's nice and central top and bottom and that you've got the point lining with there and that point lining up with there. If you want to measure along here so you know that point's definitely going to be halfway, you can. And I think I'm going to do that just to make absolutely sure we're definitely going to get it in the right place. So I'm just going to make a quick little mark at three and a half there. And then that should be enough. Shouldn't have to do it on both sides. So there's my mark is there. And that's that and that. So it's going to be about there. So that's going to go there. So I'm just going to stick another piece of tape just down the middle there, just to make sure, because I've only literally got those two tiny bits there that, are, you know, that will be sticking it. So that's your middle bit done. So you've got to do your sides now. If you want to, you can just do them with them flat, but I think it's easier to bring this over like that, fold that tab back, and then if you peel your backing off, you don't have to peel it all the way, just peel it some of the way. And then I'm going to take um, one of my pieces, this one, not around, I think. And then I'm just going to make sure that it lines up with the one that is below. So obviously you want the points to go down that, you know, down the middle line, but you also want it to kind of line up 
with the one at the back there don't worry about this little sticky bit here because we're going to cut that off in a minute so that's that one and then I'm also going to get another one I'm going to use that one there that one's going to go over the top again make sure the point at the bottom matches up and then it lines up with those those side bits here and then just take your whatever you want on the front and that is going to go on here now don't be trying to you know taking that all the way over to make that line up with there because obviously this is bigger so just kind of eye it see where your halfway line is and just kind of get it so it's more or less in place and again i'm just going to add a piece of tape i'm actually going to put a bit, a bit of tape just behind here if you want to put it on pads you can i just think there's going to be a lot of bulk so i'm not going to go with the pads so i'm just going to go ahead now and stick this one down Okay, so you should end up with that. Now, hopefully that's more or less lined up. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a little bit short, but it's pretty much it's pretty much there. So it sticks out a little bit more this way, but it's fine. See a tiny, tiny bit. So then we're going to bring this side over and we're going to do the same again. Now, as you can see, because I've got quite thick layers, it is quite a chunky card. If you don't go too chunky with your layers, because my mat was already uh, 250, this base card was about a 240. And then you've got a 180 pattern. And if you think of all those layers laid up, it's a lot. So this is the time to use those really thin pattern papers that you've got and really thin matte pieces that you've got that you can't normally use because they're just too thin. So now, again, with this little tab folded back, we're going to do the same again. And we're just going to line this up. Make sure we stick it so it lines up along that crease line and along the one from behind as well. It's going to be about there and then we do the bottom one and then we're going to do the top now, it's a bit more tricky for me because i'm trying to do it so i don't get my head in the way but obviously that means i'm having to look down on it so we don't jog the camera okay it's going to be about there that's close enough and then we're just going to add a little bit of red tape just on the top and we can stick our third one on Okay, so now all we need to do is just trim off these little extra bits at the top. So you can just lay it flat and just get your scissors in. Okay, so that kind of finishes it off. So all we need to do is go ahead and put the greeting on. And then when you stand it up, you can either stand them with them really close together so they look more like... In fact, yeah, that's quite nice. If you put more together like that, you end up with this on the front. So you've got that in the back, so you can actually get them so they kind of stand like that. So you've kind of got almost like a square. So you can actually get it so it stands like that if you want to. Or if you want to, you can spread them out a bit more. You can have them these at the front. You can have that one at the front, however you want to stand it up. So, yeah, so that's that's the card. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and add a greeting. OK, so I found a happy birthday that I've already got cut, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to put it on with very slim, well, reasonably slim pads. These aren't that slim, actually. This will be the sort of card that I will hand deliver. Um, if I want to make one of these to post, as I said, I will use a lot thinner papers. Um, the pattern papers themselves aren't too much of an issue. It's really the base and the mat combined, to be honest with you. As long as you do everything thin, then you should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead, stick this um, greeting on, and then I'm just going to add a few little gems. I'm going to be using these, I think. I think I'm going to use these. Oh, I haven't got the thing on it. They're from Lucy's shop, and they're like iridescent silver pearls type things, and they're just really nice. I think they really fit with the, the whole look, you know, the style of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this down. I'll be back with you in a minute. So there you go, so that's the finished card and obviously it folds down, I'm not going to fold it down now because of the gems, I've just stuck them down, but um, it folds down to fit in an envelope for a 5x7 card because obviously you saw when we were sticking down the, um, when we were sticking the little diamonds down, you saw how we stuck them, well that's how it folds up. So yeah, so that's your 
finished card. I quite like it like that, actually. It's quite nice. It makes it look really big. And obviously, it stands up nicely. It will open up slightly, you know, when you open it. So it will probably stand more like that, naturally. Um, but, yeah, so you can have it any way you want. But it's nice. It stands up nice. You've got space on the back to write. If you wanted to, you could put more panels in. So you could put four panels in instead of just the two. So you've got even more space to write. But, yeah, so it folds up like that i'm not going to fold it up as i said because i'm going to jog my little gems but yes i hope you like the video today please go and check out my etsy shop and um, there's a bit of link on the um on the screen and also in the description below and uh, please like subscribe hit the notification bell so you never miss a video leave a comment down below as well and i'll see you again next time bye